Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History. from the heavens, down through leaf and branch, down across the landscape, down in the soils. Down to the river. Down for the uplifting of all things. There are few wonders in life more refreshing than a soaking spring rain. It's as if the heavens have declared there shall be a restitution of all things. Water, the amazing elixir of life. And all we have to do is turn on the tap and there it is. As simple as it is to turn on the tap, getting water from the sky across the landscape, down the river, up the water tower, and to the tap can be a challenge. Engineers and scientists have long known how to handle the physical challenges of getting us clean water, but sometimes there are more than mere physical challenges because water, for all its life-nurturing properties, has no respect for property lines, or county lines, or state lines. Hi, I'm Doug Phillips, here on the banks of the North River. Today, like the river, we're going to flow across political boundaries as we explore the North River watershed. From Fayette County down into Tuscaloosa County, we'll get an up-close look at the North River, its watershed, and a special watershed moment. Come along with me as we discover confluences, conflicts, and cooperation along West Alabama's North River. This program is about a land unknown to many people, a land that in many ways has maintained its native natural wonders, a place of bountiful backcountry, forests, streams, and wildlife more diverse than can be found in much of the inhabited world. Come along with me as we explore the wild wonders of this land. Come along as we discover Alabama. Welcome to Discovering Alabama, and welcome to one stretch of the 77,000 miles of streams that make our state truly the aquatic state. In all the world, few places are so blessed with fresh water as our state, Alabama. We know from the ancient Indian mounds along Alabama waters that civilization has long drawn sustenance from the rivers. It's no coincidence that our state capital is on the banks of the Alabama River. 
Tuscaloosa served as capital city from 1826 to 1846 as it flourished along the Black Warrior. Today, Tuscaloosa flourishes in no small part because of the North River. This river and its tributaries provide fresh water for the area's ecological health, economic health, and human health. The North River flows through the heartland of this Alabama region to join with the Black Warrior River system. And it's a significant artery of Alabama's Grand Mobile River Basin, one of the most biologically diverse river basins in the nation. The North River watershed drains some 428 square miles as it unites its waters across a myriad of landscapes in Fayette, Tuscaloosa, and Walker counties. When it comes to moving water, nature's way is straightforward. Let gravity do all the work. So water flows down, downhill, down the river, down to the Gulf of Mexico. Man's way, on the other hand, has been known to go against the flow. For example, Clear Creek, a North River tributary near the towns of Bankston and Barry, was impounded to create Bays Lake, from which many in southeast Fayette County draw their drinking water. Another significant man-made river alteration occurred in the late 1960s and early 1970s, when just above Tuscaloosa, a large portion of the North River watershed was cleared and impounded, creating Lake Tuscaloosa. 5,885 acres in size and a major source of water supply for much of west central Alabama. Protecting water for consumers has often meant a top-down regulatory approach as government agencies enforce mandates of the Federal Clean Water Act. But here in the North River watershed, a unique project takes a more grassroots approach to achieving clean water goals. The Clean Water Act provided catalysts for the programs that are in place now, though it was more regulatory in nature. What makes the North River Watershed Project unique is that it provides a voluntary support system for multi-agencies and landowners to work together towards a common goal. The goals of this project are one, water quality, two, to enhance strategic habitat units, and three, education. Behind those three are the credible scientific data get a baseline reading of how alkaline the water is. Agencies that are typically more regulatory in nature, such as ADEM, their burden is relieved so much because of that grassroots effort that has come together for this project. The North River Watershed Project could not be more timely because, let's face it, I'm afraid the human species doesn't have a history of always doing a good job protecting water resources. We still have issues with erosion. We still have issues with runoff. We still have issues with sedimentation. We have issues from urbanization. We have issues from agriculture. We have issues from construction. And as we develop along our riverways, it will continue to be an issue. Understanding these issues is what gave rise to the North River Watershed Project. There still exist issues of which we have no control. One of those is how much water falls from the sky. In the immortal words of W.C. Handy, you'll never miss the water till your well runs dry. W.C. Handy, father of the blues, was born in Florence, Alabama. So you might wonder what a blues man from the aquatic state could possibly know about the well running dry. You'll never miss the water. Well, it happens. Till your well runs dry. Competition for water pits urban against rural, agriculture against industry, and in dry times, everybody against the guy who wants to water his lawn. It's as if we invite problems on ourselves by failing to adequately plan and prepare. We've identified a, a couple of things that, that are driving the need for water policy. 
obviously there's growth, there's competition with our neighboring states, but one of the things that continually comes back is we have a drought. We had a drought in the 90s and we said we were gonna do something about water policy. We had a drought in 2007, 2008, and, and we still don't have a water policy. And the question is, how are we going to manage our water so that we have the water we need, but we also protect these rivers? The competition for water in the future, particularly um, next door to Georgia, is going to increase as Atlanta continues to grow. These other states have a functioning water policy, and we've got to have one in this state to move us ahead and protect our interest in the future. The one thing that I could tell the governor that was the most meaningful is we've got to have a working, functioning legal regime and water policy for the 21st century. If W.C. Handy were out here on the river with me today, he would no doubt agree that the time for planning is before the well runs dry, before water problems and water disputes occur. Fortunately for the thousands who depend on the life-nurturing waters of the North River watershed, the confluences that could have become conflicts have instead given rise to remarkable cooperation. Uh, Water-related issues are best solved using what we call the watershed approach, which is where you consider the entire land area in a region, all of the streams that drain through that region, all of the stakeholders and landowners in that region to not only identify what the problems are, but help to determine solutions, workable solutions, that, uh, that landowners uh, can see that there's, a huge, that there's a big benefit for them at the end of the day if we, if we solve these problems through the watershed approach. The North River Watershed Management Plan takes the watershed concept to a new level. This plan considers the geology that created a natural basin for the creeks and streams to flow into the North River. It considers the forests, the soils, the hydrology, and the natural habitats that sustain the health of watersheds. The reason why this project has been so successful is because of the people. And the fact that these people in partnership were able to put aside their own personal agendas, as in the agenda of their agency or whichever group they represent, and come together with a common purpose, because everybody needs water. And so the watershed approach works really well from that perspective, um, because you seek to encourage a sense of ownership of that resource, um, a sense of cooperative partnerships within that area, um, and an understanding that everything we do affects all of our water. I hadn't been involved in anything where there's been so much cooperation, and uh, these field scientists have gone out of their way to understand the practical aspect of what I do, and in return, I've had to force myself to learn what these field scientists do. The participation has been a collaboration of local municipalities, both in Tuscaloosa County and in Fayette County, because the North River drainage basin uh, extends throughout a large part of Tuscaloosa County up into Fayette County. With a, an, an active partnership, you're able to get feedback from all your partners and um, see how they're handling their programs and see what we can work together on in order to meet all our minimum control measures as uh, required under the Clean Water Act. What happens on the land happens in the watershed. And you have here in the North River watershed a shining example of what a model of cooperation and collaboration can be. The North River Watershed Management Plan may well be the example, the model, for an important part of the water policy and planning that our state needs for the 21st century. And given the water issues faced across our country. The North River Project is a nationally recognized project as being a demonstration of how different resource agencies can come together uh, and work on water quality issues. Uh, we hope that this can be transferred into other strategic habitat units. 
The North River Watershed Management Plan is truly a shining example of what can be accomplished when people with diverse interests look to what they have in common. Participation in the North River Plan uh, is voluntary. We rely on the, the good understanding and, and the good nature of all the citizens of this state to, uh, to make sure that this happens, uh, that it's in the best interest of everyone involved to make sure that this happens. Uh, no one likes to be told what to do. No one in 21st century wants over-regulation of resources. Uh, what we're trying to do is ensure water quantity, water quality, economic development and ecosystem management occur all together under one central plan. And that plan does not need to be overly regulatory. At the heart of the volunteerism that makes the North River Watershed Management Plan a model of success are best management practices, commonly known as BMPs. BMPs include such practices as maintaining protective forest buffer along streams, carefully constructing roadways and establishing ground cover to avoid erosion, and installing sediment catch basins to prevent stream siltation. You know, when we first installed this stake, it was a five-foot stake, and we used these stakes as a method of measuring the sediment that we've captured in the first two and a half years since this BMP has been constructed. And at this particular location, we've collected over 100 tons of sediment in those first two and a half years. Water treatment cost of the small facility at Barry was reduced by 46% ever since we installed a series of BMPs. Another important aim of the North River Watershed Project targets critical natural habitats. This involves assessing and protecting those parts of the watershed that qualify as strategic habitat units, or areas of the watershed that are best suited for the recovery and restoration of species of critical concern. When we go and evaluate a watershed for pollution impacts and threats, we, we look at that from several perspectives. One is from a, a physical water quality perspective. We look at it from the perspective of habitat. Is there habitat there to support the, uh, the native uh, fauna and flora in those streams. We look at it from a biological perspective, which is uh, we look at the distribution, occurrence, and abundance of organisms that actually live in the stream. Yeah. All right. Different fish. Oh, yeah, come here. So this is the green breast order. Can you imagine why they call it that? The beautiful fish. The folks involved in the North River Watershed Management Plan can be and should be proud but instead of patting themselves on the back, they're out spreading the news. And as you all can see, you see where all that dirt is starting to come in there? That is all the pollution from this factory that drains right into the lake. Exactly. This is Lake Tuscaloosa, so you're around in here. As a part of the partnership, you know, we participate in a water fest with the city of Tuscaloosa and Northport on a yearly basis. And so it's public education that provides an opportunity for the general public to become interested and gives them the opportunity to get involved. Everyone knows how to reach out to the people in the education outreach. We're looking at our citizens from children because 20 years from now, the fourth graders are now the ones who are either the home builders, the developers, or just the citizens, the residents. So it's an ongoing task, it's not just for this year. It's a long-term approach that has been proven to work so far. Wait, 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 we need that trash bag. Hey, sweetheart, open it up for me. We have uh, something we refer to constantly. We talk about our watershed project as headwaters down and kindergarten up. So we're looking at the entire spatial area, but we're also looking at the entire range of, of people who consume water, and everybody does. I'm gonna give you guys a scenario. If we're finding maybe one thing from group one, two things. You know, there are parts of the country and, and the world as well that, that don't get the rain that we do, don't have the, the lakes, rivers, and streams that we do, but we're not promised that it's gonna be that way forever. You know, we need to take the steps to preserve what we have it's a resource that's not guaranteed. Caring about water goes as far back as Otto Leupold. 
in his land ethic and speaking to the fact that people are just a part of the community, of the natural community here, just like the water, the plants and the trees are. We're all part of it together. So realizing our part in that and realizing that we are responsible for our part on it, either taking care of it or being responsible for the neglect of it, affects not only us, but the, but the overall outdoor community. And help people come up with better choices so those don't affect the water. If we Alabamians are to ensure ample water for our needs, then we Alabamians must ensure proper stewardship of our watersheds. Down on the river, it's easy to realize that it's up to you and me to protect, preserve, and appreciate this precious resource. Alabama is the river state. Alabama was founded and relies absolutely on these rivers. The rivers of Alabama keep the lights on. When a company comes into this state, they're going to look to whether they can get water reliably and sustainably in order to do whatever process they're, they're doing, whether they're brewing beer or making cars. When we talk about recreation, I mean, recreation in Alabama is a multi-billion dollar industry, and that's relying on clean water that you can get out into. And so our economy, our livelihood in Alabama is absolutely dependent on these rivers and making sure that we are protecting them for our jobs, for our economy, and for the rivers themselves. We were blessed with really good water. Uh, here in Tuscaloosa, we have such a great water profile. It's almost like it was hand cut for brewing. You know, something we're really grateful for, the, the people that are working with the North River Watershed Plan, uh, because without people think, being forward thinking about that, it could really damage our end product, and we might not be able to make uh, consistently great beer from here in Tuscaloosa, from Lake Tuscaloosa. Alabama is a very special place. And every time I drive the state, which is often with my job, I think more and more um, what a beautiful place it is. I just really think it's going to take people coming to the table, establishing a dollar value of what this is worth not to develop it, and then really promote it, because certainly economic and economic issues rule the day. But I've also seen that there are a lot of people thinking about the natural resources we're blessed with and how to make those pay for the state of Alabama. Let's face it, places like this aren't bringing money into Alabama. And I think if we invest in that now, that not just in the long term, but I think in the short term, we see return on investment. And even a banker or a politician can understand return on investment. You go up to Lake Tuscaloosa and, uh, or up and down the Black Warrior anywhere, and you kind of realize you're really kind of blessed. To, to live in this region, and you kind of see why people gravitated historically to this area in this region. So uh, we enjoy it, and, and as you say, we find that when we discover this part of Alabama that it is absolutely Alabama. Absolutely Alabama indeed. like that. You know, water is important and we need to 
start conserving it and not be wasteful for it. Yeah, we live in Alabama, we've got, you know, 77,000 miles of creeks and streams, but you know, we need to take care of it and manage it. I think it's very important. I think there are many of us who didn't really understand what really goes into working in a watershed, but we got to experience it firsthand and got to see, in my opinion, how cool it is. Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History, the University of Alabama. This program is supported by grants from the Solon and Martha Dixon Foundation. The Alabama Wildlife Federation, working for wildlife since 1935. And the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, State Lands Division.